this took longer than I thought to get the apron. So I'm going to have a second part where we connect it to the saddle and then get it mounted onto the lathe. Hello everyone. My name is Kevin Toppenberg. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to continue on the restoration of my 1935 South Bend lathe. Today we're going to get the carriage put on. And you know how on those prior videos that I did lots and lots of sanding? Well, there is no sanding in this one, but there is what's called scraping and uh, it is just as fun. All right, so got a lot of ground to cover and it's looking really good. I'm working on the underside of this saddle and my painter's tape helped protect a little bit of the paint, but it's also tearing the black paint off. So I'm gonna do a little touch up on this then I'm ready to attach the apron to it. And there it is with the touch-ups. I'm going to try to get this piece up on here. Got at least one screw in, if I can get it to take. These old nuts are quite something. I guess it's a bolt. I always get bolts and nuts mixed up. Why do I do that? This uh, oil retention thing, it's been a while and I put that Permatex on it, so I'm gonna tighten that up now. All right, we got it back together there. That looks good. This is the next piece. I love how the tap comes out so much easier than it goes in. There she is, she's all back together. This will have to come off. Let's see if we can get this mounted. My thought is I'm gonna to try to put a strap here to come up and then I'll lift it with the engine hoist and then slide it on the end now this end is going to be much heavier so it's going to tend to go this way so i may have to try to loop up underneath here and i'm hoping that that's going to be an even lift so i'm going to now hook the engine hoist up to it i realized i had forgotten to put these little wicks in this oil tray there are three holes and only two of these little um wick things so i don't know whether one is missing, but I'm going to put the ones on the two far ends. Okay, so I've taken the power notch and put that straight down. I've oriented the worm gear in here so that the notch is down. Okay, it's in on both sides. I need to lift, position that up so it's going down, down the hole. I gotta get those two just lined up. Okay. There we go. Our next part is the gib right here. There's wiggle. And that's what this is for. You, you slide this underneath and then there's some bolts that will push up and you can get it so that it's just tight enough that it doesn't wiggle, but not so tight that it doesn't move. Now I'm looking here and there's a hole right down in the base of here and there's a one here. And I'm thinking that that may be an oil access and oil the top surface of here against the bottom. I'm gonna put in, um, have some irregularity to hold some oil here. I've got a whetstone here, but I'm mostly using it where I've mounted uh, a diamond wheel. Almost there. You can see just a little bit on that edge. Okay, I got a real nice edge. It's this edge on that's facing me. Even though it's beveled up and you would think that you're gonna go into the sharp edge, you actually cut with the, this edge right here. So it needs to have a very defined angle. I think that's gonna be nice and sharp. I got my power scraper here. Didn't that surface look nice? That blue uh, Billy down at Knox Makers put that in his heat treat oven and got that uh, surface. It was uh, rusting before, so I did that to, uh, to give it some protection. I think it looks really nice. 
I did a bunch of scraping with this power scraper before. I did it in the past, but it, it's gonna come into play in the future as far as when I show it. Regardless, I this the uh, there's a variable speed trigger on here, and pressing this and with the vibration, actually, because I did it for like an hour, actually caused uh, some nerve damage to there, and it took like literally a month for the feeling to come back to normal. So what I've done is I've gotten a variable speed foot pedal. I think I got this uh, on Amazon for like 30 bucks. You know what? Uh, I thought I was getting a variable speed pedal and I think that's just an on and off pedal. Well, that's disappointing. All right, I'm going to um, use the variable speed on the, on the trigger. Well, that's what it looks like. Kind of a cool pattern. That, that should retain oil. All right, on the gib, on the back side, there's these little holes, and there's those four screws underneath there. And I can kind of feel it catching on them as I go in. So I'm just kind of going in until it feels a little tight. All right, so let's see how it moves. Can't feel any wiggle. I think that's good. All right, I'm gonna tighten up those jam nuts. 11 sixteenths. Okay, time to get the support for the lead screw back connected and to get the tailstock back installed. Time to see it in action. <coughs> So I've got the clutch released, nothing's happening. The power selector is in, which means that the power is gonna to go to this, which will then go to the rack. So as soon as I start engaging that, the uh, carriage starts moving. Sweet, now if I disconnect the clutch and pull this out, now when I look in here, and this is going to be what powers the cross slide. Now when I put the carriage in, I can see that gear moving. I, I can't really show you, but it's, it's turning around in there. And then the last thing would be, if we have that clutch disconnected, then I can engage the half nut, and then it starts to move. A little fiddly, for sure. There. I'm not exactly sure why that is. I'm, I guess the gears have to be engaged, so I'll have to learn the tricks on that. But, boy, this is a big step, isn't it? A big milestone. If you look on here, you can see the scraping marks here. You can see them down here. But in this area right here, they're worn out. Now, ideally, I would scrape this all for flatness using a machinist straight edge, but I don't have one that's long, that long. I only have a nine inch. But I think I'm gonna just put in a few scrape marks here just for oil retention. Um, and then that won't, that won't um, stop me if I later have the ability to come back and scrape, scrape for flatness. Bumblebees come in here to check out my shop. I think it at least looks better. I think it'll retain oil better. <clears throat> After thinking about it, I think I'm gonna do the same on these and on these bearing surfaces. That looks a little better. I think that'll hold oil. And it's probably reasonably flat enough. I'll just say that to make myself happy. Again, I didn't 
take off much metal um, and hopefully it'll just retain a little bit of oil. Well, I think that looks nicer. I think it'll hold the oil nicely. Better than that flat, smooth metal there was before that was all worn. I have some whey oil on there now and it moves nicely. Probably should have done all that before I put the bed on, but uh, it worked fine here. And I thought that I was just gonna leave it, but when I put it all on, I'm just like, this didn't look quite right. So I think it looks better. I'm going to work on getting the cross slide screw put back in. And a couple of things I wanted to point out. Earlier, I think I showed a video where there a, was a set screw deep down in here. And it was going to be a hassle. I would ideally like to manufacture a thumb screw. But for right now, I'm going to use that. Second thing is, um, this is the brass nut. And I've been a little concerned about whether this is going to be, a, the wear is going to be a problem here. If you look right in the middle... That's how much play I have. And here it is at the end. It's a little bit. So that that play is gonna be from wear in the nut, whereas the, the, in the middle it was both the wear in the nut and the wear on the threads. Uh, I'm gonna install it and then I'm gonna come back and look and see how much backlash I have and see whether it's worth taking it back apart and, and replacing this lead screw and this nut. Okay. I think maybe it wasn't meshing with the gears. I got it meshed now, so it's going in easily. Okay. The final little screw here, which I'm pretty sure is an oil access port. All right, now the nut goes on. I think actually the nut goes in the cross slide piece first. All right, here's this cross slide piece. I've previously um, scraped that for flatness. I can show that video. Right, the next thing I want to work on is this compound. And there's been a lot of clits gotten picked up on these, the ways here on the bottom. A lot of that clear coat stuff. I think I may try to scrape in these. They're small enough that it'll fit on my reference block. I don't think these things come with way wipers. I think that might be an upgrade I'll do. Several long scrape marks on there. Which will help retain oil, but I need to make sure the overall surface is flat. So to, in order to scrape in this top surface, I need to have this out. Well, that popped right out of there. I have one of uh, Keith Rutger's, I think it's a nine inch a straight edge, and I just did some retouching on that. If you can see, it really is only touching in a very few places, so that's not the way it should be. So I'm gonna try to go over the whole surface with uh, my power scraper, and I have another video about the making of that if you're interested in watching. Let's try this again. All right, so I've gone all the way in one direction. Now I'm gonna come back and go the opposite direction and then I'm gonna ink it again. What we're gonna do is we're going to compare this surface to my surface plate, which is machined to be very flat. So I've got some non-drawing Prussian blue. It's a dye. I put, it, I put a glob on there and I've already rolled it out. Just kind of smooth it out with this roller. And I'm gonna put this on there. I'm gonna see what we come up with. So, these are our high spots. So those high spots are, are supporting it so much that it doesn't touch any of the other areas. So we need to take down those places what picked up the ink 
until we start getting it touching everywhere. So I've now uh, scraped off those blue spots and I'm going to ink it again. And I'm trying to do my best to not let any of that metal shavings from that scraper get on here. And I've used my stone to take off any high spots. So it's better. And we'll just keep working on that until we start getting a good surface all over. Okay, so this is perhaps half the way, a third of the way of where I want it when I end up. We made some good progress. There's two areas right here and right here. And I think that that's when it's on the thing and it's at a 45 degree angle or something, then that's right where it rides. So I'm very close to getting that to pick up dye. So I'm gonna take it down another time or two and I'm gonna see if I can get it to pick up in that area. That last print is a little thicker and I think it picks up a little bit more. But if you look here, it's picking up uh, pigment all on this side still. Uh, so that, I think we're down good on that one. Still just a tiny little bit of a groove there. So I'm gonna go over all of it again, since, except for these, this groove area one more time. All right, now I'm happy that I don't well, dang it, I think I actually do still see a little bit right there. So close. Um, to decide whether I wanna do it. I think I am gonna start hitting just the, the tops of the blue, not to do a complete coverage. And again, I'll see where it got pretty good coverage everywhere, but we'll see if we can get that a little bit closer. I'm still seeing that groove right there. Stubborn. Still there. Is perfection truly the enemy of good enough? Here's the result of my next cycle. I don't know, I'm beginning to think it's not worth trying to get out for that one little strip. Otherwise got pretty good coverage. Here's the next cycle. getting frustrated that I wasn't getting anything off with pass after pass so I went against my better judgment and used a sander but I don't think it was too big a mistake. After many cycles I'm feeling pretty good about this you see I've got coverage all in here. Part of it has to do I think also in how hard I push and how much ink there is on the stone. I'm pretty satisfied that that's a good flat surface. I'm gonna scrape in this surface now and I started scraping it and I found there was a pretty big hole right in this area because there's really no point in me trying to, to break up and work at all these individual areas when the whole thing is, is not relatively level. So I have a, a belt sander Got a machine surface underneath there, so that should be flat. And I'm pressing up against there. Even with that, can still see the substantial hole here. Assuming that as it was at, at an angle, that's kind of right where it was worn. And I'd like to try to see if I can get that out. I hope I'm not screwing things up with this. That's what I'm left with. I don't know if this is going to show up or not, but I've got an indicator on here. As I rotate to the depths of that hole, it's down 11 thou, maybe 9 thou. It'd be better to do it on the surface plate. I just stoned it. Let's put it on here. That zeroed out. Drops down to 9 thousandth. Back up to zero. Let's just make sure that the rest of this is good. So if that's one thou there, less than half a thou, that's two thou, zero. So maybe a little bit of repeatability issues here. Maybe as much as one and a half thou difference across there. Let's 
too. Started at zero, two thou down. This is two thousandths lower than this, assuming that the bottom is flat. Yeah, this side's two thou higher. These things have got a lot of junk on them. I'm not sure which one I believe. Let me try doing that inner lower surface. That hasn't been affected. I don't understand that at all. If I set this at zero. It's up 11 thou. Whereas this. It's not varying by 11 south, so this plane and this plane are not parallel. So I can't use that inner surface. All right, I'm gonna think about this. I'm probably doing this backwards. I probably should have got these planed in first and then use that to judge this other plane. And I still have that big hole there. I went and just lightly sanded the bottom side of those ways just to make sure I didn't have some sort of burr even though I had stoned them. And now I'm within like a thou. So there I'm starting at zero. There I'm plus a thou. There's like a quarter of a thou. And there's right on a thou. So it seemed to improve that situation anyway. I'm trying to figure out what caused that excess wear in that spot. Let's look here. If that's there like that, when I lift up, it would be this spot, I guess, right here, unless somehow they've got some debris that got in there. I don't know. All right, well, that's all for tonight. It's after 10.30. Time for me to be in bed. Yeah, show that dimple, see if we can knock that dimple out. I'm going to get set up to scrape in the top of this that I previously milled. Uh, it should be flat, but I want to check it. Uh, it'll take out some of these uh, machining lines. This is my first printing after milling it, so not even at all. Lots here, 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 and here. So I'll go over and uh, start scraping this down. So here it is. I took off all the blue. Still see some of these lines. Still getting a very uneven pattern. scraping and inking. I think it's got pretty good coverage over most of the area. Still a little bit heavy in here. If this was gonna be a high motion surface, I think there might be some value in breaking up these areas to have, you know, better oil retention. Since it's just a compound, and I mostly was wanting to make sure it was flat, I think I'm gonna stop there. You can still kind of see those lines where the machining uh, pass was on the cutter from the mill. I don't feel that's worth pursuing any further. All right, now flipping over to the other side, this surface just looks terrible. You can see where it's gotten a lot of galling from chips. Um, I had thought about milling this down, but in order to take that down, I was gonna have to take this surface down. I, I think I'm just gonna get myself into more trouble. But I think I will at least try to knock out these high spots and see if I can get even coverage. 
working some more on the scraping of this. I've got a pretty good coverage, except for this hole down over here where it's worn. I still haven't picked up any. And um, maybe a little bit in this area on this side as well. With that glare, I don't know if it'll show. Um, I found that my do-it-yourself uh, scraper was making too long a stroke, so I shortened it up. And unfortunately, unlike a proper biax where you just put a, some sort of a screwdriver in there and dial it off, I have to kind of take my thing apart to get down into that, to that scotch yoke and change the stroke length. I've got a whole nother video about the making of this, explains all that. And then this, the screws had rusted in, so it took me about an hour to get this whole thing taken apart. So that was kind of frustrating. It's kind of satisfying to use your own tools, but on the other hand, you kind of wish that it was just plug and play. And I wish, I wish they made biaxes. I mean, I wish they were affordable. All right, I think I'm going to call it here on the bottom of this uh, piece here. Got pretty good coverage overall. I don't think that um, that ridge is going to harm anything. Again, it's it's just going to retain more oil. Wish it wasn't there, but I'm not going to take it all the way down to get rid of it. There's still this little bit right here, but I got pretty good coverage here. I think I'm happy with that. All right, I'm going to start on this piece. I already ran the ink once, and my goodness, it only touches there, there, a little bit there, and there. Let's see if we can make that better. I've gone round after round after round with this. That shows that it's um, picking up for most of it. There's still a little bit, like I said, in that in that hole there and then along the edges. I think that overall that's fairly flat. I may change my mind on another day and work on it some more, but for now I, I think it's reasonable. I'm kind of at a standstill on the scraping. Um, when I did it the other day, I did it for like four hours. And right here and right here along this side of my finger just got numb and tingly. And the feeling is just kind of coming back and I want to give that a good chance to heal because I'm not real happy about her problems. I cleaned up the nut. Um, this is kind of cool. So there's the nut that holds it in and it's got a, a oil access point in the middle with the set screw. So that's kind of neat. And then that will go down in here and then it lets oil go down. Now that was all clogged up in, in grease and gunk and I got that all cleaned out. This had been cammed out quite a bit and I cleaned that up. Okay, then this will go on the cross slide and then we'll put the gib in. Okay, so that seems to be going fine there. There's my gib, and I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. I'm gonna put some flaking on for oil retention. I'm gonna put in the gib. If you notice, there's a notch right there. This bolt will go in there like that, and then that will pull it in and out. So that slides in there like this, with the bolt in there first. And then I'll tighten that up. And it's got three quarters of a rotation of slop. That's gonna to be too much. I'm gonna to have to come back and fix that. The second thing that I did was mount the cover on the end here. It's got two bolts that go in there. That's just a cover that keeps chips from falling down in on top of that lead screw that goes across there. The next thing is the nut that I showed before that's got the cool uh, oil access. As I was resurfacing this, I found like a big hole and I machined off the top. So it actually lowered everything down. And then that left this nut protruding just a little bit above and the compound was hitting it. So I had to sand off the top and got it so now it's below the surface and then I can put the uh, set screw back in. Now it's going in real easily and it goes down far enough that you can actually use the slot head as a screwdriver rather than dodging to the left and right of that screw. So I think it's back working the way it's supposed to. And it's below the surface there. Now, when we put the, uh, the compound part on here, 
that goes over there. It'll go all the way around over top of that. Need to get my bolts and get that fastened. Let's clean these up like that. Okay, so these bolts go in there, out the little channel and around. So usually you set the compound to a certain degree and then fix it. 11 sixteenths. Odd size in my mind. Well, I don't like that laxity. I don't like that at all. That's that nut and that lead screw. All right, I'm going to um, put a little bit of oil in here and here, and then I think I'm gonna call that a day. Oh, I like how nicely that comes out. Love it when it's clean. The threads are not bunged up. All right, that should be good and oiled. A little worried I made that too loose, like it's just gonna vibrate down. I guess if it does, I can put a double one in and jam it. Here's our next part to go on. My wife and I were exploring on some old back roads and came across this cool old abandoned railway depot building in limestone. It's pretty cool. So I've been struggling trying to get the top of the compound onto the, the base. Um, it just doesn't seem to fit up in there. So I'm gonna kind of walk through how I, I think I've got it. I, I haven't completely put the whole thing together, but I think it's gonna work. Okay, so this piece has to go over the cross slide, over the thing here. It, it's just barely, uh, the dovetail just barely such that it won't come off. I, but I can't do that when I have the nut in place. There's something in there that's hitting that won't let it come down over there like that. So I think what I've found to do, I'm sure there's probably some easier way to do this. All right, once I get that on there a little bit, then that lead screw will stabilize that nut. Then slide this end on here like this, turn it up on its side, get it roughly lined up. Yep, yeah, there it's caught and then put that in. So, that seems a little awkward. Now there's a screw right here on the top. That should line up as an oil hole. Take it as far forward as it'll go. Then start threading this in. Actually, I don't know that I needed to take it all the way back out. It just seems like I need to Every couple threads I advance this one, I need to back that one out a little bit. There's a little zero there, so I'm guessing I need to put that so the zero's on the top. All right, now I need to get the gib in. It's a little bit like a Chinese puzzle. Okay, there we got that. It's rattling around because it doesn't have a gib. I did not do any scraping or anything on this because this has very little motion and I doubt that there's very much wear on it. So like before, we slide the gib in. Easier said than done. There's very little play there. Yeah, I think that's a perfect amount. Okay, so I just need to put my oil, um, put some oil in there and then the set screws and that part will be done. I need to make way wipers. That's a piece of felt that will go on here so that if there's any grit or something, it won't get pulled underneath there and then become grinding powder. So I think they sell these on eBay, but you gotta buy it as part of a set and I think I can make my own. Well, my first try at the way covers came out perfect. I really didn't expect that. The way I did it is I took, I actually took this little receipt paper, held it up on there and kind of uh, ran a pencil over it to kind of get the outlines. That was this. I then brought that into my computer software, uh, traced around it, made a vector file, brought that into OpenSCAD um, and printed it. Now, it works on this side. On this side, you can see there's a little bit of a stick out, so I'm probably gonna come back and tweak that design for the far side. If you look, there's two holes. 
the bottom hole was the primary hole and it was all full of gunk and I was putting in an 832 tap and because it's so close to here, I couldn't use a tap handle. So I was carefully trying to turn it with a wrench and I, it was not hard, it was just in dirt, but my hand slipped and it turned at just a little angle and I broke off a tap in there, which just frustrated me. So I looked and there was this indentation here, but it was there wasn't a hole there. And I started looking at it and I took a pick and it seemed like it was picking out. So then I just took a, a, a small drill and went in it and it looked like someone had dr drilled these holes and tapped it. And then they decided that wasn't right and they filled it what felt like lead. It was a really soft metal with lead or solder or something. So I just went ahead and uh, took all that lead out and, and ran the tap in. Again, I, I, it was the threads were already there. And so I'm having to use the top holes on all of these rather than that, just because of that one broken tap. I hate breaking taps. This is my rocker style tool post. And I did not have a piece like this. So I made some measurements and also some trial and error. And I found that the radius is either 11 or it's 12 inches. I 3D printed that out of PLA plastic, made it 100% infill, so it should be solid. Whether that's solid enough to hold uh, actual cutting is another issue. I guess I could use this as a pattern and just take a piece of aluminum and uh, put that same curve in there. I don't know. Uh, I really want to get a quick change tool post. I got these way covers 3D printed. I have ordered some felts to go behind that. I put some touch up paint on this area and I want to give that a good amount of time before I put the clear coat on. So folks, I'm gonna call this part finished. Woo! Um, we are so close to making chips on this thing, I can taste it. Uh, a couple more things I still need to do. I need to do some research to find out what grade of oil goes in here and get that filled up. And I need to clean up the three jaw chuck and the four jaw chuck. I actually am probably gonna make a separate video about that. I'm in the process of making a threading dial. I might make an extra um, video about that. Then I need to come back and do all the uh, fit and finish and, and balancing. Oh, another key thing that I really need to do is I need to get some feet in here um, and then get this up on feet so that I can then balance and take any twist out of the out of the bed. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Isn't she looking good? Boy, she's come a long ways. Do you remember what she looked like at the beginning? Whew. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me a lot. And uh, love to have comments. Just drop me a line. I'll try to get back to everyone. Uh, thanks again for watching. Stick around and subscribe so you'll know when the next one comes out. Peace out.